I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was a weird transition. But anyway, yeah. But um, anyway, Sharp actually has like a randomizer on his stream where he doesn't pick a character. It's like a website that picks a character for him. So he always picks a different character no matter what. So it's like completely uh, uh, randomized bracket run. And he still gets to top eight or sometimes even close to winning the tournament. So it's really cool to watch. But this is an amazing Zelda player. So if he's able to beat 17 with a character he doesn't practice that much, like, dang, that's crazy. <laughs> But uh, into yeah. this map. Okay, uh, I will. Fine. I will continue to ignore you. Yeah, in any <laughs> case, 17 doing really well here. He's putting a lot of pressure on Knight to Sharp here. He's even Ooh. though that Ninja can be really mobile if he gets caught. We know that he's a glass cannon. He's pretty weak. He's pretty lightweight. So he's gonna take a beating if such a strong character like Zelda manages to confirm one of the strongest sweet spots in, a, in anyone in the roster. Actually, the back air, forward air, the up air, even it's just ridiculous how strong it can, how far. It can get you because of how strong it is but uh it's not it's looking a little bit one-sided here 17 doing a phenomenal job with Zelda overall keeping the pressure at all times off himself either with Nehru's love just like this but Naito Sharp is slowly starting to download and trying to adapt let's see if he can bring it up for the next stocks and if he doesn't well it's gonna be a little one-sided however the pressure here keeps on adding up because Zelda can no cannot recover at all yeah. You know what's funny? I think Zelda actually doesn't mind fighting at the ledge because she has so many things she can still do while she's at the corner of the stage that she's like, okay, you can keep me off the stage, but you have to dodge the Phantom, you have to dodge my up B, uh, my side B as well, and then I have a bunch of other things I can mix with the ledge too. So even though, you know, Sharp has the stage control, it's uh, still under, he has to be very careful not to flip up or still get hit by something crazy. Oh! Hello? <laughs> yeah, MSM. Wait. Well, yeah, but we can, we can't, can't see, see the screen. <laughs> can't see the screen. It, this, this, no, okay, okay, no, no. It, it was just a little bit of spoilers. Nothing, nothing happened. You guys didn't see. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know what that slide was, honestly. I think that In was like case. some weird Photoshop thing. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so yeah, 17 still with this stock lead crazy. Finally getting the four throw kill. Definitely kills a little bit better than Greninja's up throw in this game, which is kind of funny. But uh, let's see if Sharp can do some more to make this comeback happen. Honestly, it's been very difficult for him to approach. And then when he does get in, uh, I don't know if this is like him just not knowing the character that well, but he hasn't been able to get that many uh, long combos. And I think that's really been uh, struggling for him, but nice. Drag down doesn't get the jab lock set up, unfortunately, but still pretty good for him. Staying alive on this stock just barely. Okay. Gotta watch the Phantom. Oh! Yeah, yeah it's exactly what you want to avoid. The Phantom pressure, it can get you if you're not careful. And even if you are, it can still get you because of how good the hitbox is. That sword is ridiculously lengthy and can be devastating, especially, as I mentioned earlier, if... Uh, the character that you're fighting, your opponent is lightweight, such as Greninja, can be pretty dangerous. Right now, 17 exerting dominance, but Knight was not ready to give up. Farore is when doing its work there, trying to keep him off, off, off him basically. But yeah. it's becoming increasingly difficult. Trying to get the read on Farore, but the retaliation keeps finding a shield, and the stock is not gone yet. Uh, even using the reflector to deal with the water shook in two. It's just, man, Sharp is having a rough time getting this stock right now. Oh, well, yeah. No other ways to say it. <laughs> Gotta be careful, too, with the jump-ins. Uh, Zelda's F smash, dash back F smash is good to catch landing. Also, the up smash as well. Uh, I think 17 is also trying to bait Sharp to jump over the Phantom so you can yeah. catch him in the air with uh, yeah, an up air or something. Yeah, we're, we're back here, forward here. It's, it's still, Zelda has a lot of options. If if she manages to condition you into jumping or into putting yourself in dangerous situations, it's something that 17 feels comfortable. He's done it before. He's doing it right now. He's still surviving, even though the percent is really high up, and he's still wanting to get that aggression. I think, as you mentioned, he's trying to set up. I would say, I would like to argue that it's unnecessary because of how good just the neutral is and the advantage that he had. Just an insane lead two stocks even though it was really high up on the percentage on the percentage 
it was still very dominant. I don't know if Naito is going random again for this next game. I think it should be. I don't know if he's staying Greninja, but definitely this character is going to be a little bit complicated for such a hard hitter like Zelda. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Greninja actually has the tools that do well against Zelda, but I think it comes down to a lot of yeah. matchup experience with Knowledge. using Greninja yeah. against uh, the... So, uh, I don't know. It's hard yeah. to tell what whatever Sharp is gonna do. Like sometimes <laughs> I see him like go random the whole time, and then suddenly he's like, actually, I'm gonna go my mains now, and then okay. he just goes, he goes zero suit or something. That's fine. You you gotta respect it because if he wants to back, he need he needs to go for it at all times. And 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 it's not only a a matter of 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 the back, you know. It's also pride. You you don't want to lose unless yeah. unless you're taking it like a casual approach, which you could argue that Naito is. However. He's playing to the best of his ability. So even though you could say like he's memeing or trolling, he's still playing his best with whatever character he's getting. So it's insane to see how well he's performing, even though he's not playing his main character. Definitely, definitely. Oh, no, e Pokemon, e trainer. Pokemon trainer. Okay, okay, another really strong character. You know what's also funny about when I watch Sharp uh, go random? A lot of times he gets a really good character. <laughs> he doesn't always get like random, uh, like, Gotta I don't know, Isabel, Isabel, Ganon. He just happens to always get a really strong character for the most part. So, uh, good on him. He, he got a Pokemon trainer. <laughs> so let's and see what he can do. He's definitely going to try to squeeze the most as he can. We know that Pokemon Trainer has the ability to mix up, to play in different play styles or, or bring a variety play, uh, basically game, game plan when it comes to attacking or aggression. You can go with Squirtle for the rushdown. You can go with Ivysaur for a little bit of more stage control. Or if you want to pack a punch and delete stocks, you go with Charizard. And it's looking like Naito feels very comfortable with Squirtle, I would like to argue that he takes this stock with a beautiful down smash with no remorses, only 17%. Hard to catch a little turtle, isn't yes. it? It's so good. Squirtle's uh, low profile dash, his speed, like he's just getting around Zelda so well. And then these combos, so, so effective. Look Sharp, him, might, Sharp looking like he's just gonna solo Squirtle right now. <laughs> imagine, imagine. <laughs> looking so good. <laughs> You'd love to see it though, because some uh, a lot of Pokemon trainer uh, competitors or mains tend to use more Ivysaur, which is a little bit more reliable when it comes to taking stocks, uh, because it's like a yeah, it's still fast, it still has a bit of a low profile, and the hitboxes are janky as hell. And now we see the first swap in this game, number two, from Naito Ooh. Sharp going for Ivysaur. Is he trying to get for a, go for a weird or? A, Definitive confirm. It's only a matter of seconds before oh. we find out what Farore's wow. wind takes the stock with a beautiful slash of the winds. I'm, I can't believe that killed sub 100. Like, he wasn't I, at 100 when that hit him. He was like, yeah. <laughs> that's 70 or something. <laughs> so strong. Oh, F tilting the uh, Nehru's love, I think. Which will be very good timing yeah, for sure. Oh, and that back air is so potent all the time. Charizard has some amazing hitboxes. You can never sleep on that character once he starts swinging. But here's the Squirtle right back into this. 17 already on their last stock. This is looking rough. Okay. Nice pressure here with Squirtle. Really, again, he's just really good at using the hitboxes and speed of Squirtle. Just get right in the other space and make it really hard for 17 to really even set up the Phantom. Because by the time he presses that down B... Zelda is, or sorry, uh, Squirrel's right in his face, hitting him. But Ivysaur is out now. Actually, not a bad idea to go Ivysaur here. Okay. Playing some interesting ledge games. Not gonna die, he's a heavy character with Charizard. Ooh, but the back, or sorry, forward air, out of shield, yeah. so strong. Even Charizard's gonna die to that. Yeah, that's something that I wanted to mention a, a, a couple oh. seconds ago. Oh, no, unfortunate. He missed the ledge or he fast fell through it. It's very unfortunate that he couldn't uh, get the ledge there. But uh, something that I really wanted to mention is the fact that um, 17 is struggling with Squirtle specifically because it's really hard for Zelda to connect those sweet spots. Being such a small character and, and also having that uh, low profile at, at basically at will, it makes it a little harder for Zelda to connect with those devastating hits that she has. So it's definitely good recognition there from Naito. Well deserved to get this game number two. And and if in game number two, three, three he gets a good K 
character, he might be able to um, position himself in a, in a favorable situation in this set. But uh, definitely uh, 17 trying his best, even though it, the matchup was a little complicated. Yeah, I think the funny part is too, you, he beats you, right? And then you're like, man, how do I adapt to the next match? He's like, yeah, I'm just <laughs> gonna, go a, different, you gonna go a different character. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about that. That's that's, yeah. that's actually a, a big brain, big brain decision there. Uh, yeah. you, you can't counter pick or, or counter adapt if, if I don't even know what I'm going to get myself. Yeah, <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah, I that's agree cool. with you on that front. Now, we're on the wait to see what Naito is going to delight us with. New character, oh. new opportunities, and we're going with Meta Knight. You Meta know, Knight. The flurry, the flurry of slashes. Lots of jumps, lots of opportunities off stage. But Zelda does have the Farore's wind. So it's going to be a little hard for Meta Knight to confirm those uh, edge cards, I would like to argue. You know about this match, it was really interesting. Depending on how well... Uh, Sharp knows the combos and uh, how often he can get in. I actually think Zelda's not hard for Man Knight to uh, up air combo at all. She's one of the easiest ways to kill with that combo. And uh, as far as edge guarding goes, Man Knight has a lot of different ways to edge guard that are relatively safe too. So uh, if 17, like if he commits to that uh, Phantom off stage, Man Knight has enough time to hit Zelda before that move comes out. You gotta be very careful about that. So let's see. Yeah. I really want to see what Sharp does to utilize the burst tools of Man Knight's dash attack and dash grab to get in on Zelda. Oh, good patience there. <laughs> he just waited. Yeah, and that's it, that's right. exactly what I was that I was going to mention. He was being extremely patient there, and I think this is the perfect strat for Meta Knight because even though he can get a lot of mileage from being hyper aggressive, he also gets good burst options, uh, or I would say great burst options that if he manages to capitalize on will be able to put um, 17 in a very tough position. We know that Phantom is going to be basically the nail, the the, the, the stone in his, in his shoe, but it's going to be really hard for Knight to Sharp to survive as such a lightweight character when Zelda has such hard-hitting moves. Definitely, and that, that was another, you know, common trap that 17 and most of those have been going for. Like, they use the Phantom just to, again, condition you to jump high, and that up air hitbox is so huge as soon as you jump you're already in the the up air a be out of shield not going to be enough to kill on battlefield also some pretty good di there from 17 but only taking 10 percent not too bad for sharp trying to call out a jump with the up smash 17 is not going to give it to him not easily anyway yeah definitely not yet he wants to put wants to get him a little bit more of a lead but just barely missing the ledge once again 17 struggling to find those magnet hands for the second time in this set it's a little unfortunate however he did his job even though percentage was high percentage was returned as well to his opponent and it's looking really good at least the lead looks comfortable for him but that's something that can change in a second if meta knight gets his hands his little stubby hands but that took pick uh toothpick of a sword be devastating for racking up a lot of damage and maybe even taking stocks if you're not careful or if you don't respect it enough it all boils down to how much aggression is returned from both sides nice again sharp really good just using man nice dash to get right in Zelda's face not necessarily to press a button punitively but to just be in position to punish uh 17 if he does something unsafe bringing a lot of good grabs and dash attacks that way not necessarily converting super heavily, but I don't really expect him to do that as, like, not a man I mean, <laughs> He's still doing super well in neutral, though. Okay. Hanging back here, playing around the Phantom, but multiple jumps definitely gonna help out a lot in that situation. But the fourth throw here, get enough time for the Dense Fire, the Phantom. So many things Delta can do here. Oh, the up throw kills, yes. Taking advantage Even with of the... Yeah, no, like it, it was, was a high idea. percentage, but taking advantage of, of the height of that platform oh. it was great condition and an even greater read from Naito Sharp without forward smash, taking the stock back to back with no percent, basically clean slates for each of them. So it all boils down to who makes the right decisions to get this early percent leads, a lot of 
characters in the roster are able to convert off low percents, but it, uh, I would have to argue that Zelda isn't one of those particularly, at least. So it would have to be, like, on paper. No the, way. Uh, the, no, no, no way. way. He's not going to get it. He's no, not no, okay, okay, okay. Don't and up that's going to be it. That Arr. is so unfortunate Arr. for Naito. He had the right intention, the right intention to kill, to get the blood out there. And and, and listen, we got to respect it. He, he tried to go for it. It's unfortunate that he was so far away Arr. from the ledge. And Zelda Arr. didn't have the right percentage to get the kill. Arr. This is why you're not mad at me. Tornado or Nair there or eight aerials. The aerials will kill or he's getting close to killing. The other will never kill there. He doesn't know. He didn't know what the character could do. Yeah, hey, I, oh I respect God. the sauce, dude. That, that was really good. Like, we listen, we, we all got bamboozled. We we thought, like, there was a possibility that might that might have worked. It's no, there wasn't. There, there was no wasn't. possibility. <laughs> I, I mean, Meta Knight. You gotta believe. You gotta believe. No. He didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's okay, Sharp. You had the right idea. You just got the wrong end move. <laughs> Execution. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. You you definitely. I I, I was gonna say you hate to see it, but you love to see when uh when competitors such as Naito Sharp, the caliber of competitor, try to push the limits of a character even if he doesn't know yeah. full extent. It's just you 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 can only clap. That kind of behavior yeah. because that's what pushes the meta and that's what makes everyone improve yeah i'm actually so impressed that he has he knows how to do the up air strings at least he just didn't yeah. know how to end the combo <laughs> that was actually <laughs> so good but great stuff i, I know 17's like okay thank you for giving oh, wait, me that wait. free stock i'm i'm you happy yeah, only yeah, one more definitely. game away from <laughs> going to losers semis yeah, 17 looking very comfortable here. Well, I, I I don't know exactly how comfortable because we don't know. Well, now we know that it's going to be Sonic. But prior to that, you don't know what you're going to get. And that can be a little uh, upsetting to your mindset. So 17 has to do a phenomenal job here in order to keep composure and to keep a game plan. Because yes, you're playing with different characters, but you're playing with the same opponent. So you start noticing habits, you start noticing the patterns of recovery, of aggression, and that is the moment where you start capitalizing and punishing and making advan taking advantage of those situations and instances where you can actually read what your opponent is going to do and punish accordingly. It's really good you mentioned that. I'll just give a quick anecdote to uh, with the buzz. Gave a critique of Sharp as a player once. He said, "Like, yeah, Sharp is very, very good, but sometimes since he plays so many different characters, he can start of sort of see a habit that he has with uh, each character, and uh, he can kind of take advantage of that. So even though he's using a different character, like he said, each game, he's still playing the same person, and there's some tendencies he has as a player that 17 might have caught on to right now. But uh, let's just see what happens here, because this is like Sonic versus Zelda. I don't know how common this matchup is for 17." I know we see it a lot with like maybe Vin and Sonics, but uh, I don't know how much 17 has fought Sonic himself. Still, a, still not a very common character, despite how strong he is. Yeah, and even even if he does have matchup knowledge, oh. it's still incredibly skewed towards Sonic. It's just the speed, it's just the strength. It's really easy for him to get in and close the distances when it comes to stopping that Phantasm, or maybe, the Phantom, sorry, or maybe trying to contest it at all times. This is something that Naito Sharp can definitely take advantage of and maybe take us to game number five. Hard matchup, hard opponent. So definitely 17 needs to be on point if he wants to take this set with a 3-1. Oh yeah. Something I also forgot about uh, Sharp as a player is that he's actually super experienced with fighting Sonic himself with pretty much all the characters he plays. So I'm actually not surprised that he knows everything to do with this character. He's like fought the character so many times now. Uh, but it's, yeah, nice. great, great backer, great backer. But yeah, I'm actually, uh, well, it's really nice to see how well and fluidly uh, Sharp can move around with Sonic here. Actually looking like a Sonic main right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, he wants to keep that uh, distance for as much as possible. However, he doesn't need to because we know that Sonic speed is just ridiculous and he can just close the distances in a, bl in a blink of an eye. Ooh. Ah, but punishing, going for that phantom, ridiculous punish there. Farore's win barely missing, trying to get something started. I think it was a little early for that Farore, but it's definitely something that Asel Domain has to pull up at any point because it's just so good and you love to see it. However, the lead is looking very in, it's very on sharp's favor and you definitely can see his level of confidence when it comes to this character it's insane how good this matchup can uh, how matchups can actually affect the course of a set and especially if you go random yeah i think sonic actually is a great character versus though just because of like the raw speed he has yeah. by the time she sets up the phantom uh sonic gets in her face before the hitbox is active and you can just do so much Oh, but there's the slash deep off stage. Yep, straight to the ledge. But he's going to take some opportunity to set up the stage with the traps. Gets right past the force smash, though. Oh, nope, not going to hit him there. But can't grab the ledge again. Oh, he held down so he could extend past the ledge. Very smart recovery. Sharp definitely saw it coming, though, so he didn't stand too close to the stage. Okay. It's becoming... It's becoming increasingly harder for 17 to do something to stay alive because the percentage is really high up trying to get those get off me options those nearest loves and the phantom trying to get some stage control however that Farore's win is becoming increasingly predictable and every time it comes up Naito Sharp is trying to go for it w weird interaction there the air dodge barely missing the ledge and it's another opportunity for 17 to do something he can get the reverse ledge guard here but nothing Nothing happens. Instead, we're going back to neutral, back to center stage. However, with this amount of rage, if 17 manages to connect or to predict a good read, a good option, the stock might come in his favor. Yeah, and rage Zelda also can be very scary too if she gets the right hit. So Sharp still has to be very careful here, even though he has a really good chance of stealing this game out. Okay, it's the dash attack. Oh, watch the landing. He's looking for it. That big up air might be coming. Uh, Sharp he's suddenly uh, looking like he's really struggling to find a way in and get the kill safely, but there's the up tilt. Uh, tilt. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good tilt. Really good. Again, going through the Phantom. Good option there. Ask per usual. It worked several stocks before, and it will work it once again. Just like that, going to game number five. Great reverse reversal from uh, Naito Sharp, going with uh, almost reverse, well, at least reverse 2 0 for now, at least. So we are going to see if he will bring the 3 0, but it all depends on luck. Because remember, Naito <laughs> Sharp is going with the random picks. So you never know what he's going to get, not even himself. Yeah, this is a really interesting game five situation here because. You can't even, you can't even say like, okay, Sharp has like the momentum. He he won the game, but it can all change depending on the character he gets. Like, what if he gets a bad matchup? Imagine. Yeah, it's all about how um, Seventeen responds to the to the um, uncertainty of what character Knight to Sharp Knight to Sharp is going to get. Mm. It, it's it's. It's, it boils down to the adaptation and how well-tempered the mentality is. Because, yeah, 17 feels comfortable with Zelda. He's doing insanely well in this bracket. He's holding really well against Knight to Sharp, who is someone who plays fundamentally really well with any character that you put in his hands. So, let's see if the counter pick, the, maybe the, the the stage, I don't know if, if, if 17 is going to try to, to change the the stage he went to the character selection so i wouldn't be surprised if we see a, a stage swap however how realistically how effective can you be at counter picking with a stage against an yeah. opponent that you don't know which character he's gonna pick it, yeah it has to i feel like it has to be uh you just go off of comfortability like what stage right. are you most comfortable on in generally yeah, yeah, yeah. match up and not necessarily to counter pick your person just for your own sake <laughs> i would say yeah, no, I, ha I have to agree with you. It's it, it it's I think that's the the right the right answer. Basically, how comfortable you feel in in certain stage, 
how well you perform or how many setups you have. I would like to argue that Zelda does pretty well in triplats. Uh, Battlefield being really good. Small Battlefield being decent as well because of how hard the knockback that she has on her aerial attacks is just really good. Oh. So those blast zones can be really good. Now, we have Mewtwo, a very glass cannon character. It can be devastating, but it can also be very underwhelming, especially against such a hard hitter like Zelda. If a minute. Yeah, if, if, if 17 manages to catch Naito, yeah, again, we're going to Triplet, just as I mentioned. If he manages to catch him with a back air, that's going to be stocks deleted left and right. The only thing I have in my mind seeing Mewtwo is the confusion. Is, is he going to use the confusion on yeah. the Phantom? Like, I I think that's a good tool he has. <laughs> I don't know if, how much it's going to come into play in this match right You're now, because right. I haven't seen this match really. Ever. Not at all. But that is yeah, a tool he yeah. has, for sure. So maybe he can check a 17 to make him not use that move as much. Because it could be very bad if he gets reflected to Zelda. He killed incredibly early. Also, yeah, his song he... is amazing. <laughs> song is amazing. <laughs> yeah, he is going for those for those uh, interactions where he can punish with the uh, with the confusion. And that back here almost getting the stock. However, Farore's win coming up just in time. And the Phantom again to keep the pressure off him. In, that's what I told you. I said at the beginning, if one of those backers managed to land with a sweet spot, they're going to be stocks deleted. And now it's Naito's sharp turn to try to keep 17 off the stage. However, we're coming back to neutral, taking cover in one of those platforms, trying to stay alive as much as possible. Let's see if he can capitalize up this slight lead that he has, or if Naito is going to take the stock immediately back. Nice, and there to cross up the shield. That could have been bad. Could have gotten a special shield if he didn't uh, position his aerial correctly. Another thing that Sharp has to be careful of is swinging moves out punitively because of that huge tail that's also a uh, hurt box. And Zelda can just throw one of her very big moves and just it can trade in a really bad position for Sharp. So, kind of rough, kind of rough Ooh. spot to be in right now. Get the Shadow Ball here. Oh my! Oh, again. How many it, times? This is the third it time. It's happening. Oh, it's so unfortunate for 17. So many Super SDs. Super unfortunate. Indeed, and, and and the fact that Naito couldn't get the the kill with that shadow claw, even though it was perfectly spaced, it was like the 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 blast zones are not huge. It was doable. However, that great DI from 17, he looks comfortable in this matchup. And even though it's looking really even, it's really up to uh, how the neutral plays out. And I would have to argue that 17 is doing a phenomenal job at keeping Naito sharp at bay. And even though he does have the option to bring or uh, reflect that phantom, it's still becoming quite difficult for him to confirm these options. I don't know how comfortable uh, Naito feels with Mewtwo. Yeah, it's uh, not a very common character. I think he's really relying on his fundamental skill to stay yeah. in this match, and it's definitely helping him out a lot. But I'm not sure how many like Mewtwo-specific things that he is uh, knowledgeable of. Okay. Gets past the dense fire at the ledge here. Oh, nice confusion. Oh. Keeping himself alive. Just a little bit longer. He's got to be careful, though. Oh, my goodness. Barely avoiding oh. the upbeat. And even with the weak, not even sweet spot F tilt, it's actually going to kill Zelda. Like, wow. That'd be a little bit of bad to get there. Okay. On the platform, nice. Gets a little bit of a tech chase. Another re-grab. This is looking good for Sharp. He's going to go for the up throw. Good DI. Good DI. Even Mewtwo is living that. Very impressive for Sharp here. And he has that shadow ball. You got to be careful. But the... <laughs> Seventeen had all the time in the world to react to it, and he did accordingly. Oh my goodness! Insane. Yeah, beautiful Nerys love there to reflect the such strong projectile. However, Naito's starting to bring the heat up. You can see, you can tell how good or how comfortable he's feeling overall. And now with a lead, he basically confirms it. He's out for blood. He wants to get those extensions, and he's trying to get as much damage as possible. However, you need to keep in mind that Zelda can bring it back in one second. One interaction can be devastating for such a glass cannon character like Mewtwo. However, the percentage is pretty high. If Mewtwo, if Naito manages to connect the forward air here or it's something that allows him to take the stock he might be able to win remember this is the best of five situation and this is game number five so it all boils down to who gets the best read in this last couple interactions that we're gonna see in this set Sharp's looking really strong on this stage okay barely living the forward air he has a shell ball fully charged 
Oh, going for the down air two frame. So much pressure at the platform on the edge, and there's the big dash attack, punishing the Phantom perfectly. Sharp actually gets game five with Mewtwo. All, all different characters every single match in this set.